Aloha. I have my cards in my hands and I'm beginning to shuffle now just as I tuned in to you guys. So I'm going to continue to shuffle while everyone tunes in just so I can kind of shuffle in your energy. We are at the time of the new moon today, so I just want to say again, I've said this before in my videos and I've written about this before, um, I'm not doing these videos in worship of the moon. I'm simply using the moon as a time measure, um, a way to measure four quarters and create a full cycle out of those four quarters to create a circle in the simplest way, um, in a way that we can all meet in very easily and efficiently. And so the moon is over us all and it's just an easy way to track time and track a cycle. So that's the only involvement of the moon here. I'm simply using it as a reflection of the light that's behind it. And I'm not talking about the sun. I'm talking about the original emanation and the one light back of all things. So it has nothing to do with the moon other than the fact that the moon is keeping the time for us to maintain these special cycles so that we can all communicate and create opportunities to connect and grow in the way that is the most efficient by putting our energies together and not doing it alone, but recognizing our unity and our inevitable decision to get together because that's what's happening whether we like it or not. And so working with that and meeting the universe halfway is what we're doing here. So it's the new moon. So that means it's a new cycle. That's all that means. And we can see the reflections all around us, but the moon is a really way, a easy way for us to do that together. Whew. So this is a Leo new moon. And there are the fiery energies about the fire has been burning. This whole cycle has been about fire. If you tuned into the videos, you know what I'm talking about. But if you're just tuning into your life, you know what I'm talking about. Because it's all one and it's all connected. So now we're closing up this eclipse season with a Leo moon. So it's like we're using all of that energy from this past cycle to fuel the future. And that's what we're always doing. Always, always doing. But now we're doing it with so much conscious awareness so much presence that we're really on top of this wave. So, when you're ready, go ahead and empty all of the thoughts that have been repeating themselves and recycling themselves throughout your mind. Release any feelings, whatever it is, just tell it to hold on, to wait just a second, and you'll pick it back up when you want to, and when is, ne when is necessary to do so. So ask those things to take a seat, create a space, and in that space, in the center of it, where you find that infinite no space and no time, I'll meet you there. And when you're there, go ahead and connect to the deck however your imagination wants to do that, because the imagination is key. You can't listen to how anybody else does it. How do you see and feel yourself connecting with this deck? Whatever your first answer is, is the answer. Don't question it, and just do it. So I thank you, Archetypes and Faces of the One, for revealing to us your archetypal wisdom in a way that is so clearly communicated, in a way that is most helpful, in a way that really paves the path for us and provides a map to activate us here and now with a knowing that what it is we're wanting to achieve can absolutely be achieved with your guidance and with our own will meeting you there. Uh, oh. Amen. What is the card to summarize the entire eclipse season that we're now closing up? And in that ending is implicit a new beginning. So in that same card will be revealed what we're taking with us into the new cycle. What's the best way we can access the challenge and the gift here now? Who is the archetype as the ally to remember as we go through the challenge right now. What is the challenge? And in what way does that challenge actually become the gift when we perform the alchemy necessary as we meet those opportunities for the challenge and gift? And what 
is a card that will show us a little bit about, let's not look too far into the future, but a little bit about what we're stepping into, the near future, the future that is going to begin this new cycle. A taste of the beginning. Oh, and I pulled that one upright, so I guess we're starting there. <laughs> so that's the Six of Cups. And this is the card for the future, and it's the near future as well. So Cups is emotions, it's the suit of the heart. And so this is the card of giving and taking, receiving and giving, acting and surrendering, using the forces of polarity in harmony. And you can see the boy and girl are exchanging a little vase or a cup, right, with a flower in it, and the flower is white, symbolizing purity and truth. So we can have this opportunity to give and receive in purity and truth, give unconditionally, love with full compassion, give and receive from that space. So that, that cup represents the heart in the middle of it all. This is what we're stepping into, the opportunity to do that, to refine our path, because no matter what, we're always giving and receiving on the path. But what looks like, what's, it looks like what's coming up is more of an opportunity to really tap into that truth that in all moments we are only giving and receiving, and how much of that giving and receiving is intentional and aligned with the highest good of the one. We're going to begin to see that, especially in relationships, because relationships are always the key way that we learn, when, especially when it involves the suit of cups. So that's the future. Let's go rewind to the card of this past cycle. This is the card summarizing this past cycle and what we are using as fuel for the new fire. Justice. Perfect. So this is the card that summarizes the last cycle and the card that we're using to create our future. And the Justice card is a major arcana card and it's reaching a place of balance and right order. This feels very simple and straightforward to me. I feel like we've done a lot of work in getting to this space of feeling balanced and feeling like I'm finally in the right place. Like a puzzle piece just clicked in as the final piece and the whole picture is illuminated and activated. That is what we just went through. We've leveled the playing field and we're ready. We now have a foundation for the future of the Six of Cups. We now have a proper foundation to be able to give and receive that love and truth and purity because we had a lot of weeding to do in the garden, you know. We had a lot of setting the stage to do before we could create the optimal setting for this to take place. We really prepared ourselves in the highest way. And the challenge and gift in between those two cards is the King of Pentacles. Pentacles is the suit of Earth, the physical plane, and this is the king, so it's the mature aspect of that suit, knowing how and when to act. Right now, the challenge is paying attention to what we're actually accomplishing on this physical plane and making sure we're mature about our decisions and doing what is right so that we can be abundant, so that we can continue to be prosperous, so that our way of life, our way of living is sustainable. Because that's really the true king of pentacles. You can look like you got it all and you can look like you got it down, but if it's not sustainable and if it's not in alignment with the queen of pentacles, the heart of it, his other half, then it's not complete. So being a true king of pentacles is making sure that everything we do, everything we think, say, do, is aligned with a true, wholesome and holy vision of abundance and prosperity for one and for all, because that's what a king would do. And that includes, of course includes, the earth the queen, the entire feminine archetype, and the masculine archetype as well. He's a protector of one and all. So right now the challenge is going to be refining our vision of abundance and prosperity like we did this whole cycle, and just now adding the cherry on top, which is making sure that whatever we are wanting to manifest in the vision of prosperity and abundance, it looks very green and very good for this earth right now because priorities that's going to be the challenge. Anything that we've attracted so far and we're so grateful for, we're going to recheck it and make sure that it's sustainable. And everything that we are now manifesting, we're going to make sure that that vision inside, before it comes here, is as sustainable as possible so that we can ace this challenge. Because what this says right here, this being our challenge, all these cards live in us always. But if this is the card that's relevant right now in the position of the challenge and gift, it means we have some 
hidden superpower there, okay? Because within the challenge is hidden the gift. The equal and opposite always lies hidden within. So there's some magic there. The challenge may be making it happen, but the gift is so much greater. When we just trust and make it happen, the universe is going to have sort of a reserve of power, some sort of backup. And you don't need to understand why or how that comes. You just got to know it and feel it. And once you conceive it and believe it, you receive it no matter what, right? So this is all just really inspiration for bringing out your own creative qualities and your remembrance of who you really are in that creative power. So is that such a bad thing to think of, to believe in? To then receive, because this is the law, because this is natural universal law. So the king of pentacles will be the challenge, but also the gift as we trust and take those steps we need to take. Even if our fearful thoughts tell us, our mind chatter tells us, don't do that because you're not going to get as much money. Or don't do that because it's going to take longer to have the things that you want. You need to check that and you need to reprogram that inner dialogue and say, well, that's okay then, because... I'm not going to think about how long it's going to take or this or that. I'm just going to trust that it's coming in the highest way for one and all. And of course I can be patient because there are blessings abound in each moment. These are the things that we constantly need to rewire and keep telling ourselves that inner dialogue needs to happen until it's locked in. And so when we just trust and we make sacrifices, thinking, you know, at first maybe thinking I'm going to have less, but knowing deep inside that, no, it's going to be more for the one. Then we make those changes and the universe sees that and supports you and performs miracles. So to strain and doubt and resist and try to micromanage things is so silly because ironically, the thing that we're trying to micromanage is always there waiting to break free and burst into infinite miracles for us if we just open up and relax and allow it to do its thing. Whew. Okay, that's enough of the challenging gift. The ally card right now as we move through this challenging gift is the Nine of Swords. Everybody's always scared when they see this card. <laughs> the nine of swords is before the ten. So nines are endings. It's swords. It's the mind. It's air. It's waking up from some illusion of the mind. Waking up from some nightmare. The thing is, he's woken up from the nightmare. And if he just remove his hands and look down, he would see that the whole time he was covered in a security blanket. His blanket is his security. It's what protects him. And if you look closely, the blanket has the zodiac signs on it and the divine rose divine order so it's saying the divine order is our blanket of protection always and when we just wake up from our illusion we can remember that if we just open our eye <laughs> if we just remove the veil and open our eye we would see that that's what we're covered in always and there's nothing to fear so once we wake up we're able to then move to the 10 the next card in this sequence and have a new beginning a new thought program a clean slate so what I feel this is saying right now, and this is in alignment with all of the downloads I've been writing and everything I've been seeing and receiving, I see right now that we are remembering that th this is what's happening. We're waking up from a nightmare. A lot of us have been shedding illusions and waking up, and it's time to really acknowledge that and move our hands. That's the next step. Like, we can't just sit there and keep saying, okay, like, I've, I'm up now. What do I do? I'm up now. What do I do? Like recognize like you're up. Like this is it. You don't have to turn back now. You've got to know that if you're reprogramming and reprogramming and reprogramming, eventually the program is reprogrammed and then move on to another one. So it's important to remember that we move through this in cycles and we're at the end and we're ready to let go and start a new beginning. It's a clean slate and swords are truth. So as we move through this challenge, remembering this is the ally, as we realign our lives to be sustainable for the highest good abundant and prosperous for one and all then making those sacrifices will be easy because we're remembering that we're doing this to end a program once and for all and we remember that when we perform those sacrifices great miracles come as a result six eleven and a nine and a king so this is it our new moon We've leveled the playing field. It's time to give and receive in purity. This is what our new cycle is going to be about. Connecting and relating, communicating in truth and purity. And right now, the challenge is creating a life that is prosperous and also sustainable. Prosperous for one and all. Prosperity is not sustainable if it is not for one and all. So realigning our visions to make sure that we ace that challenge. And the guides help us through is the Nine of Swords, remembering why we're doing this. It's a reprogramming. Do we want it or not? Do we want to really wake up from the nightmare? Or do we want to keep the veil of our hands over our 
eyes or I the whole time. If we really want to fully wake up from the nightmare, we have to remove our ha our hands, the veil from our eye and get up and do the work. So happy new moon to you guys. You made it through the eclipse season. Awesome. <laughs> There's going to be so much shifting, I feel, right now opening up with this new moon, but beyond the moon, there's a great opening happening in all things, and you can feel it if you just close your eyes and tune in, or do whatever you do to tune in. You can feel it. It's all around you and within you. There's nowhere you can look where it, it is not. The change is everywhere. So, I know the eclipse season is ending, but just stay prepared. Stay prepared for the ride, because it's only getting more and more wild. Um... I was thinking of something earlier today, and I, I want to share it with you guys that, yeah, it really does feel like the apocalypse is happening, and there are fires everywhere, and explosions, man-made and natural, and, you know, the volcano is erupting, and there are protests, and uh, tropical storms, and all these things, and yes, it's happening, but always there's an equal and opposite to any energy, and so there is this uprising as well, and there are people, countries competing to see who can plant the most trees right now. So I have hope in that because I know that the light always wins and it, it will always be the cherry on top. It will always come with the cherry on top because it ensures our evolution, you know, and so there is that equal. So even though things seem apocalyptic and crazy and it's like these end times, there's also a whole new beginning happening at the exact same time. And I feel truly that in the very beginning of it all. Within the original pattern, we made a promise that we would do this, that we would always wait until the last minute to make that change, to make sure that we made the most of the experience, to go fully to the other side of the scale so that when we bounced back through this polar shift that's happening within and without, we would make it so far to the other side. Because we understand that our light is eternal and from the beginning, we knew how much we could endure. We did this to ourselves and we signed up for this. Because we know that the pain is temporary, that the loss, pain, and, and suffering is impermanent. But what we're going to achieve from it all is so great. And it's truly making diamonds out of coal. That's, that's how our, our consciousness is. It's a very intelligent design. And so don't lose faith in these times where it seems crazy and scary out there and apocalyptic and holy crap, like what is going on from every angle? Just remember, we wouldn't do it any other way. We're warriors and we made it. So that at this point in time and space, we would make sure that we made the most of this experience. I don't know about you, but that's my belief. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate you. Happy new cycle. I so look forward to growing with you through the cycle, hearing about your experiences, and meeting throughout the cycle next week for the first quarter to kind of check in and see how this is unfolding, kind of already see a manifestation of this happening. I would love to hear how your manifestations of this are coming about in the next week. And then we'll have the full moon and the final quarter to, to really wrap it up. We'll do the deal like we always do. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you feel guided, please share these videos with people. Um, share my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Rebecca Magic, so that we can spread this channel as far as possible so that we can get as many people as possible to create that space because these cards are pulled from our energy, our collective energy. Uh, it's no fun to do this alone. That's why I do this. I'm not doing this to make money. I'm doing this simply because this is really awesome, really cool. It's a really good way to track spiritual statistics to kind of relate, connect, meet people all over the grid that are going through exactly what you are and just kind of collectively acknowledge that this archetypal play out of energies is very, very real. So if, if you know anybody who would like to join in on this experience and share and maybe they could find some value in this community that we created here, please share it. And thank you. Mahalo. Aloha and shalom. <laughs>